Hey folks, Dan Bell from Intigent here. In today's video, I'm gonna create a custom project center view that groups the projects by company services. If you're familiar with the project center view in Project Align, I'm gonna to navigate to there right now. And basically, uh, this is a project center view groups. Uh, basically the projects are just, you know, each row represents a different project here. Uh, what we're gonna do is create a view that groups the projects by a specific attribute. For instance, if I were to navigate to this program, Grouping view, summary by program. This kind of gives you an idea of what we're going to do, except that instead of grouping by program, asset management, corp, web by CRM, you're going to see groupings by company services. Okay. Get this question quite frequently. So I did want to go ahead and, and uh, do a video on it so people can use this video as a reference to learn how to do it for themselves. The steps involved first, we're going to create that custom field custom field called services and that custom field is going to contain those possible values you can select and tag your project with as the company service. Next we'll create the custom field. That custom field is going to have an entity type of project and it will reference that lookup table we just created. After that we're going to create a custom project center view. We'll start out with the summary view as a basis so we'll copy that then we'll add a few fields. Uh, we'll go ahead and group that project uh, the view by the company services field and then we'll add an optional filter and we're going to uh, actually filter to make sure that the company services field is not blank uh, the reason I'm doing that is because for those I don't have a value filled out they'll all go at the very top of the view and it'll look a little bit messy you know, for the purposes of the demo um, I'd rather have a clean view and then once all of that is done we'll go ahead and test the final solution all right, so let's get started. Uh, but like we said, we're gonna go to create that custom lookup table first. So on our enterprise data, we'll select enterprise custom fields and lookup tables. If you're familiar with this area, the top is where we create custom fields. The bottom is where we create the lookup tables. We'll select new to create a new custom lookup table. And we're just gonna call this services like so. Um, it's going to contain text. You know, we're good with the code mask, a single level. It's not, not going to be something with structure to it. And what we're going to do is start putting in the possible values that can be selected for our projects. All right, so we've got travel services. And we have financial services. The one option I'm going to change here is I'm going to sort ascending just because it'll make it easier for people to locate and select the value. With that said, we'll go ahead and click save. Remember the next step after the lookup table is created, we create the custom field that references that lookup table. Okay, the price custom fields, go ahead and select new field. Remember it's gonna be called company services, right? Let me go ahead and select that. Not, not worried about a description here, folks. Entity type, like we said, it's going to describe projects. It's gonna contain text. So we're good with that stuff. Uh, custom attribute, well, where's it gonna get its data? It's gonna get it from that lookup table, right? And we call it services. We'll go ahead and select that. Uh, do we want it to contain a default value? Well, not really, because if they if it's the wrong value, how will we know to go back and change it? They'll all be set. We don't want it, we don't want it to do that. It'll make it a little more complex. Sometimes I put a value in the lookup table of unset, um, and then set the default value to that. That way, we'll know that that value needs to be changed. But yeah, you know, since I didn't put an unset there, we'll just leave those alone. Uh, these two pertain to if this is has structure or whether we're allowing multiple values to be selected. Neither is the case. Right, uh, we're not using departments in this environment. We do want data displayed. These two are fine, not selected. I'm not going to require that the field has information currently, but if you did want to, you would change that selection to yes, and that way you would have to put a value in there next time you open the project and try to save it. All right, let's go ahead and save that custom field. Steps one and two are done. Let's go to step three and create that new view. We'll under look and feel, we'll go to manage views. And then under manage views, we want to focus on, remember we said project center view. Here's project center views under here. We're going to start with the summary. So we click anywhere in the cell except on the name because that will open it for editing. Then we select copy view and we're going to name this summary by services. All right, so let's do that. And there we go. Click OK. So our screen will refresh momentarily. And then after it does, we'll go ahead and open the summary by services. Click right on the name of it. And then we're going to add some fields here. 
All right, we're going to add project health. Okay, we're going to add risk rating and ROI. And then we're going to add total cost and total benefits. So let's find those. And there we go. Now each one of these has to move up eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, now that we have the fields in place, we have the project ID name, and then we have the new fields we just added here. Uh, we also need to add that, remember the company services field. Uh, the reason we need to add that is because we cannot group by it unless the field is a part of the view. We'll add it and we'll leave it at the very end because since we're grouping by it, I don't need it displayed anywhere meaningful toward the left part of the view. We're fine with that. Um, let's go ahead and down and look at some of the other options here. The formatting, I'm good with the Gantt chart. The left offset for the splitter bar, yeah, maybe move it over 1,200 pixels. That would be a good start. And then uh, the next thing I care about is the grouping section. I'm going to leave the grouping format alone, but what I want to do is group by company services. Okay, so we'll go ahead and select that. No more groupings. So as you see, we can have three levels of groupings. The sort by, we'll go ahead and put project name. That way it'll sort by project name within each grouping of company services. And then lastly, filter. We'll go ahead and implement that optional filter that we talked about. Company, let's find company services here. There it is. Does not equal, and then we'll leave the value blank because we want to filter out where the company services field does not equal a blank. Click OK here. Everything else is fine since we copied the view. We already have categories assigned. That way the view will be accessible to people. We'll click Save. And then once we save this, we'll have the building blocks in place. Then we need to go ahead and actually test with some projects. So we'll go back to Project Center. We'll click on the Projects ribbon here. I do happen to have a bulk edit app here. We'll use that to change the values for some of these projects. And what we do here is we go ahead and click on select fields and this will allow us to add our new field we created, company services. We'll click add and then click OK. And then we'll be able to manipulate some of the fields for some of the projects, right? So I'm going to start from the bottom because that's actually the easiest way just because of the way the drop down list box displays, right? So there you go. We'll add a few of these. And you can see the status indicator to the far left, right? The spinning indicator changing. And then when the green check marks are in place, that means the project was checked out, published, checked back in, and the values have been set for those particular projects. And we'll wait till the last one finishes here, and then we'll be good to go. There we go. I had to actually click off it for it to process it. And so, like I said, we're just going to change a handful. As you can see, I have a lot of projects in here. Therefore, we're only going to display in the view, what is that, about 11 or 12 projects. So let's go ahead and go back to Project Web App. Click on Project Center. Remember, we last used the Summary by Program view here. Uh, we're actually going to use the Summary by Services view now. So let's click on that. And there is our Summary by Services view. Right? Financial services, software, telecom travel, the projects within each one, right? So far looking good. There's our project health indicator, risk rating indicator, return on investment indicator. Okay, we also have our total cost and total benefit fields. Everything's here that we expected. Uh, so, so far things are looking pretty good in this view. I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing so far. If I wanted to have rollups here, click on this. Now I can see the aggregate of the total cost and total benefit also the work and duration. Um, you know, again, if I also want to see the Gantt chart, I can click on the Gantt chart checkbox here, bring the Gantt chart into view, select one of these items, scroll into view. We'll go ahead and zoom out, right? So now you can see the Gantt chart. So there you have it, folks. There is that pretty simple project center view, grouping by company services, summary by services, you know, three steps. Then we went ahead and tested it. Hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any comments or suggestions, don't hesitate to reach out. Love to hear from you. Have a great day.